Hi, everybody. And I want to welcome you to a, one of the brightest, finest days in the long history of the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. We have been helping our neighbors and our fellow Coloradans who are down on their luck for about 35 years. And we have built buildings all over the place, lovely buildings to uh, give people permanent housing. We give them health care. We give them mental care, substance treatment, job training, child care. But it's hard to remember an occasion as exciting and as just as innovative as the project we're going to open today. I'm T.R. Reed. I'm the chairman of the board of directors of the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. And as I always say, being chairman of the board here is a very easy job because this place is a well-oiled machine. The, the 660 staff members of the coalition just do a fantastic job every day helping our neighbors who are down on their luck. And this building here is a classic example of innovative thinking. Here's what happened. Uh, a fellow named John Parvensky, the founder and the director of the Colorado Coalition, happened to notice that a hotel was for sale. I believe this was last May. By June, he'd signed a deal. By October, they closed on it. And this month, we're going to open it. Uh, 30 days from today, this building will be full of people who had been living on the streets and now will have beautiful housing. Uh, When we put up buildings like this, uh, a building like this, 140 units in a lovely setting, would take us about a little over two years and in the range of 30 to $35 million. Uh, we did this project in what, a total of about six months, a fraction of the cost, because the people at the Coalition for the Homeless, John and, and all his staff, had were broad-minded enough to see an opportunity and grab it. And they grabbed it, and very shortly, a whole bunch of our neighbors who are living out in these cold Colorado weathers are going to have uh, warm housing in this building. It's a great day. Um, I want to thank all the people who have helped get this done, our staff, our funders, the state, the city. We're just really grateful on behalf of the people who get to live here. And with that, let me introduce the guy who thought all this up the President and CEO of the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless, John Parvensky. <clears throat> Thanks, TR. I appreciate it and want to welcome you as well uh, to, this, uh, to this day. You know, on behalf of the Coalition and our Renaissance Housing Development Corporation, we couldn't be more pleased to be here today. Um, you know, this is the 17th opening of a housing development that I've been involved with with the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless over the last 30 years. And this, I can tell you that this isn't the largest one, it isn't the most modern, it's not the prettiest, and it's certainly not the most expensive. But as Tom <laughs> indicated, uh, it'll probably ha have the most immediate impact in terms of helping people who are calling the streets their homes tonight. And it's the quickest one that we've been able to bring online ever. Uh, as TR said, it usually takes from conception to occupancy about three years to bring a, a new affordable housing project on the line. Uh, and you know, the project was really born out of desperation. Uh, we were scratching our heads trying to figure out how we could shorten that time period so that the people who are on the streets tonight could have a place to call their home, their own home. Uh, as quickly as possible. And so we were able to find this building uh, in May. We were able to get it under contract in June. And that set off a three-month process that we had to get to actually close on the purchase. And so we set out asking our funding partners, how can we get you to work outside of the traditional way of financing affordable housing through low-income housing tax credits and through gap funding through the city, through the state, uh, and through our other housing partners. And I was just so pleased that all of the partners came together to see the, the exciting possibilities that lay within this old, uh, this operating hotel, that we could move in in very short period of time and meet the needs of people who are on the street. And so we started with the Colorado Division of Housing within the Department of Local Affairs. 
uh, to ask them how we might be able to piece together the financing to make this work. And it, we're pleased that we were just at the right time to be able to get to re apply through their RFA process request for applications and be able to get in line not only for an allocation of housing vouchers to ensure that the affordability for everyone, no one would pay more than 30% of their income could be realized. Uh, and we also then submitted a gap appli funding application so that we could, get, could find the money to acquire this building. We followed it up quickly with uh, the city of Denver, and I'll talk about that in a little bit as well, uh, as well as with the Denver Housing Authority. But as we have the governor here, we'd like to just acknowledge uh, the leadership. Rick Garcia is here, uh, the head of the Department of Local Affairs, and the governor uh, has made health care and housing a priority. We at the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless believe that housing is health care, particularly for those who are vulnerable, those who are living on the streets. Uh, and so by bringing those two things together, I think we have pins or, uh, that you can take with you uh, to reinforce that with your neighbors, that housing is health care. And with a commitment to bring parties together to make a project like this work, uh, the governor uh, is clearly on board with that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Governor Jared Polis. Thank you, John and, and TR. Uh, this is an example of an amazing job cutting through red tape and taking something that was a quality in and, and at, at a teeny fraction of the normal cost of building something new, a teeny fraction of the time, opening the doors. I just walked through a couple of the rooms. It doesn't take a ton of work to change something that was a hotel room into a residence. They added uh, microwaves and, and, um, and refrigerators, but it's a fraction of the cost of building something new and also able to come online so quickly. I also want to thank uh, I'm a member of my cabinet, Rick Garcia, who's here, who helped uh, this project cut red tape and get to yes. We are so excited uh, to be able to celebrate that this project will soon be opening 139 units. I also want to thank the city of Denver and Mayor Michael Hancock for their work uh, on making this happen. It really shows what we can do when we get creative about problem solving and affordable housing. Uh, taking a hotel that was for sale and in a matter of months, at a fraction of the price, converting it to housing. 139 units, 25 are bridge housing, which are temporary housing for people that uh, are between their permanent housing options. Uh, the Department of Human Services will also develop 24 units of supportive housing here in Fusion Studios, and then 114 of permanent supportive housing units. These are the folks that will be paying up to a third of their income uh, to be able to live here. So uh, they work full time, some might even work two jobs full time. Uh, but it's hard to afford to live in the Denver metro area. They'll be able to live and be able to afford their rent and afford food and to support themselves. Every single unit here has a private bathroom, a kitchenette, a microwave, a mini fridge. It's in move-in condition and it's going to start welcoming families very, very soon. This is a fantastic project, an example of getting to a place quicker and at lower cost by being creative. But we know that there's many more who need help. The cost of living continue to increase, not just in the Denver metro area, but across Colorado. And in many cases, wages just haven't kept up. That's why we're continuing to work to help our rural communities with housing shortages, including home rehabilitation, down payment assistance, uh, helping our homeless vets and survivors of domestic violence, among so many others uh, in our state. Uh, we're also looking to increase uh, funds for vouchers for individuals with substance use disorders who are experiencing homelessness or transitioning from an institution to help them recover. Uh, often interactions with the criminal justice system uh, don't have that patient first in mind to help them succeed in overcoming that substance abuse problem and getting on their feet. Uh, this example uh, here, Fusion Studios, is a great example of what we can do uh, when we work hard and we're creative. John and TR and the entire team who worked on this did an amazing job thinking out of the box. Investing in supporting housing interventions is not only the right thing to do, but it's also the smart thing to do in Colorado, reducing emergency spending, improving health outcomes, and helping make sure that people can support themselves by having an incentive to work without having uh, to spend every single penny uh, on housing. 
The state will continue to invest in creative, cost-effective, proven solutions, and our goal is really to create a continuum of interventions to quickly match those in crisis with the resources they need to have long-term stability, success, to get on their own feet. Fusion Studios fills a critical need in this continuum to help our friends and our neighbors be able to support themselves with dignity and afford to live uh, in our thriving Denver metro area. I want to thank everyone for helping to give a great send off uh, to this great, exciting new project here at Fusion Studios. And I'm really excited to be here to help unveil and uh, to help open this tremendous, exciting, and creative project. Thank you. So as the governor mentioned, the nexus between housing and health care, we've actually dedicated 10 units here in partnership with Denver Health, a home to health program where we're targeting the highest utilizers of the Denver emergency room and hospital who are homeless with the presumption that if we can provide housing with the wraparound services that we can provide here, we will not only improve their lives, but will reduce the cost to Denver Health and, and, and also to the state through Medicaid uh, funding to be able to reduce the cost for everyone. Um, we're also, since we're talking about the subject, I'm jumping ahead, but we're also, we're not stopping here. Uh, we're just finishing up financing proposals for a new recuperative care respite facility in downtown Denver adjacent to our Stout Street Health Center. Uh, to be able to provide 75 beds for folks who are homeless, who are hospitalized, uh, and would otherwise be discharged to their homes if they had them, but because they're homeless, they cannot be safely discharged to the streets. Uh, and so, and, and while we're doing that, we decided that we'll build another 98 units of permanent supportive housing on the upper floors in order to take advantage of that opportunity. So 173 new places for people uh, to be, uh, to have a, a supportive environment to live in, and that will be the next project. So we'll be coming back to the governor, to the city, to the state, to our housing <laughs> authority partners uh, to say if we can do it here, we can do it there as well. So with moving forward, uh, as we were able to get support from the Colorado Division of Housing, um, and I see Kristen Toombs, who uh, was our uh, point person uh, internally in terms of getting the vouchers and the gap financing together uh, and Wayne is here as well in terms of uh, working on that side uh, but we also reached out to the city uh, Britta Fisher who was just uh, taking on the new Department of Housing Stability uh, and said this wouldn't this be a great opportunity to be able to move quickly to bring housing to those currently on the streets uh, and she was very supportive but said you know this new D3 program through the Denver Housing Authority would be a perfect uh, way of getting this financed, not only to be able to acquire the building, but to be able to provide additional project-based vouchers. Uh, and so we were able to bring Denver Housing Authority on board. Uh, and, uh, even though they hadn't yet closed on their D3 bonds, we got enough of a commitment to be able to feel comfortable with signing the purchase contract and being able to bring the, uh, and actually close on the property. Uh, and we went out to the private sector and got support from the Northern Trust Company to provide an eight and a half million dollar bridge loan because even though we can move bureaucracies quickly to make decisions on commitments, it takes a little bit longer to actually get all the paperwork completed and to get money flowing. Uh, and so we, I stuck out my neck on behalf of TR and the board uh, and we basically closed with a bridge loan uh, that will be repaid from funding from the state, from the city, through the housing authority um, next month. And so we'll be able to then move on uh, and move on to the next development. So I would uh, really want to acknowledge the leadership of the city uh, through the, the director of the Department of Housing uh, and uh, Housing Stability, uh, Britta Fisher, and she's going to say a few words. Good afternoon. On behalf of Mayor Michael B. Hancock, I'm honored to be here to celebrate Denver's latest affordability project, Fusion Studios. And uh, as has already been referenced, 
practically instant housing. Uh, so it's very exciting to see this type of innovation here in Northeast Park Hill and this innovation in housing development to serve our residents most in need. We all know that we need more housing units and we need them quickly. We can't get them fast enough. The Fusion Studios is a game changer, bringing forward much needed units in the fastest manner possible. To John and the coalition and your whole team, thanks so much for making this project happen. For sticking your neck out too. <laughs> <laughs> the city is working on many different levels uh, to help ensure that episodes of homelessness are brief, temporary, and one-time experiences. We have implemented a number of new strategies and approaches to assist people in need from co-responders with our uh, public safety department to the Denver Day Works employment program and expanded court resources. But the number one approach is housing. We are a housing first city in Denver. It's imperative to get people inside and into housing. As John mentioned, housing is healthcare and it's hard to be healthy when living outside. We want people to be inside where they can receive the supports, restore their health, and help to achieve that housing stability that we're striving for here in Denver. My thanks to the mayor and city council. We have, we have prioritized housing for all of Denver through our local affordable housing fund. And as John referenced, um, have partnered with the Denver Housing Authority to leverage that fund to accelerate the production and preservation of needed units. It's launched in 2016 with uh, $15 million annually and then doubled last year in 2018 to more than $30 million annually for Denver. This partnership with our Denver Housing Authority is called Denver Deli uh, DHA Delivers for Denver, or D3. Now that has $129 million in bond capital available to invest in housing. That is more money faster. Not quite as instant as this project, but it is more money faster and more units and helped to uh, catalyze uh, this project in, as well. We also know that half of these funds are dedicated for land acquisition, including this site where we are today. It will also help to develop and preserve nearly 2,500 affordable units over the next five years. Today marks a milestone in this D3 partnership with Fusion Studios as the first land acquisition made possible with D3 funds from our partners at DHA. I want to acknowledge Ismael Guerrero and the whole DHA team for their partnership. <laughs> Denver is very proud to provide other supports to help make Fusion Studios pencil out. We're currently presenting a contract to City Council for approval of supportive services here at this facility. It'll assist future residents with case management, counseling, and other needed supports. And the Department of Housing Stability is also supporting bridge housing here, as was referenced by the governor. These are 25 units here at Fusion that will be designated as bridge housing for individuals needing stability prior to connecting to permanent housing. This was made possible through a contract passed by the City Council last month uh, with CCH and was expanded. So thank you to all of our partners in that partnership as well. This is really realizing our vision uh, of a Denver that is healthy, housed, and connected. The Fusion Studios is the latest of many city-supported affordable housing projects to open in Denver. There are a total of 921 affordable units receiving city financing that are currently under construction here in Denver at 14 different sites. Yeah, <laughs> and thanks to my team for working on all those. Uh, and to all of our partners, because we also know there's an additional 1,383 income restricted units that are in our pipeline and anticipated to break ground within approximately the next year. That is a lot of housing coming to Denver. We are doing more, we are doing it faster, and we are doing it with every partner that we can. And so thank you to so many in this room for thinking creatively, thinking outside of the box, thinking with inside the box, and moving things forward. I want to thank and acknowledge uh, the governor, Jared Polis, and the state of Colorado, and the great team of professionals that work on this day in and day out. I also will take a, a moment of personal privilege to thank the governor and the state for uh, recognizing me. I uh, termed off the state housing board just this month and the governor declared uh, a Britta Fisher day in recognition, <laughs> recognition of my service. So thank you to the governor for that. 
It made my mom and my grandma really happy. <laughs> Uh, I also want to, of course, acknowledge the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless for John's leadership and the whole team there. Uh, as somebody who was formerly on the staff uh, of this great uh, organization, it's great to see the continued commitment to lasting solutions here in Colorado. Uh, and then, of course, to Denver Housing Authority. Uh, in closing, I want to say that I am so pleased to be here and celebrate these new units of practically instant housing and the innovation that these units represent. I truly hope that we can replicate this model and these partnerships at other sites in Denver and get more of our people in Denver housed affordably as we want to be healthy, housed, and connected here in Denver. Thank you. Thank you, Britta. Uh, yeah, as Britta indicated, it really does take a village to raise a property like this and to bring all those partnerships together to get it done. Um, Anyone can have an idea, but without the support of many people to, to actually make it happen, uh, it's not going to go very far. Uh, so in that, in that spirit, um, I want to, again, acknowledge Ishmael uh, Guerra from the Denver Housing Authority and that partnership, uh, and Haley, who's been working diligently to, uh, to complete the financing uh, paperwork uh, for the D3 funding. Uh, it's been great to work with the team. Uh, great partners over the years uh, in stepping up even more on this one to get this done in record time. Uh, also, again, uh, our friends at Northern Trust uh, who uh, were able to provide that bridge loan to be able to actually bring the property into our ownership so that we could start doing the improvements uh, even while we were waiting for all of the funding to come in place. So Erica Hayden and Tom Riley, who's new on our board, uh, board of directors, uh, thank you for your leadership in making that happen. Uh, we are also, you know, the, the funding for building the building or acquiring and renovating a building like this, uh, that's just one part of the, of the puzzle in order to create affordable, supportive housing for vo those on very low incomes or those with no incomes. Uh, and so the, the capital st structure in order to make that happen is very critical, and that's what we've been talking about. But equally important are the housing uh, vouchers or the rental assistance that makes it possible to have enough income for the property to be able to pay for a 24-hour front desk staff, to be able to provide quality property management, to be able to maintain the building, to be able to make sure the utilities are paid uh, and functioning, to be able to then uh, provide uh, the security to make sure that people who are living here are living uh, in quality and then to provide the ongoing maintenance to make sure that the building as it looks today will look like this in a year, in five years, in ten years. So all of that is made possible. We couldn't do that if we were charging folks $100 a month, which is what they can pay on average. We can only make it happen by bringing those housing vouchers or rental assistance to the property. And the commitment from the Colorado Division of Housing uh, through the Housing uh, Solutions Grant uh, Program uh, and the, uh, the funding that with the Denver Housing D3 program also comes with project-based Section 8 vouchers. So it ensures the affordability, again, whether somebody has zero income or somebody may be uh, receiving SSI uh, or Social Security. So that's the second piece. But then the third piece is if you're dealing with people who are on the streets, moving them into housing, uh, for some folks haven't been housed for 10 or 20 years, uh, we know that we need wraparound support services to be able to ensure that we can help those individuals, uh, not force them uh, to accept services, but be there to help them achieve their own goals. And having that robust residential services uh, case management, clinical services, health care, uh, and employment and vocational services available are critical. That's the third uh, rung on the, uh, on the ladder to ensure that a property like this is successful. Uh, and in that vein, to be able to fund the services, we've structured the, uh, the financing a little innovatively to be able to fund the services uh, out of the operating revenue from the property and then supplementing that with grants and, and commitments. And so the, the Department of Housing Stability is providing a supportive services fund 
uh, that will ensure that we'll have funding to provide those supportive services over a 15-year horizon. Uh, and our friends at Wells Fargo uh, were the first to actually provide uh, funding to be able to launch and, and start up the supportive services here with a $150,000 grant. So I wanna thank the folks at Wells Fargo for your support of this project, as well as other endeavors. They also have signed up for the respite program. So they're ahead of everyone else. They're the first to sign up for both of these exciting projects. So uh, get in line. And then as we were getting, uh, fitting together the pieces of financing for this, and just, just the wonderful experience of, a, uh, of one of the, I call her a fireball uh, attorneys in our community, uh, Iris Eaton, uh, who had been working on litigation for over 10 years on behalf of folks who were mentally ill and who were languishing in our jails or in our state institutes because they were not getting the competency restoration services quick enough to be able to get them their cases disposed of and allow them to move back into the community. Uh, and so because of, uh, of her litigation and a settlement and funding that was created by that settlement, uh, they were able to provide three and a half, nearly three and a half million dollars to help fill the gap in the acquisition and renovation financing to be able to make uh, this project happen. And we have committed to house here uh, 24 individuals uh, who are in that situation, uh, who are basically uh, only a supportive housing unit away of being able to leave the jail or the institute to be able to have their competency restoration services complete and to be able to access that integrated health care and supportive housing that will set them on, a, on the path uh, to stability and recovery. Uh, so Iris is here and uh, I wanna just wanna thank her and the team for making that happen. And we look forward to our partnership with the Department of Human Services to be able to ensure that folks in that situation can have access to housing rather than ending up back on the streets. So thank you all. So um, just wanna acknowledge also that, uh, wanna, you know, I come up with the ideas and other folks on our staff do the hard work to implement them. And Jennifer Cloud, who is our Vice President of Housing Development, working closely with Bill Windsor, our, our Chief Real Estate Officer, really took the lead in terms of, of making the, the last part of the development of this property happen. Uh, and Jennifer isn't with us here today because um, on Friday, at uh, just a minute before midnight, she gave birth to a healthy uh, uh, boy uh, I don't know the weight, but uh, <laughs> uh, but the amazing thing is that Jennifer was ru walking, running through the halls of the Denver, uh, well, the Web Building, from per permit clerk to permit cl permit clerk, say that three times fast, uh, to be able to get signatures, to be able to get the certificate of occupancy to, uh, for the building. Uh, so she was doing that up till four o'clock went in the hospital at, at, at eight and gave birth <laughs> at midnight. So that's the dedication that I think makes the coalition special. So I wanna thank our, our property management team that also has been working diligently in terms of getting these units ready for occupancy. Uh, Amy Moore uh, and, uh, and Becca Whitman, uh, who's gonna be the site manager here have done a tremendous job. Uh, Matt Marr, uh, who is the regional manager, who worked very diligently over the weekend uh, to get this place ready for this opening. So thank you all. <laughs> and then our residential services staff, uh, Laurel Radmore, uh, our housing first staff, uh, who are headed up by, the, um, by Carrie Craig, our uh, health services team uh, headed up by uh, Brian Hill and Lisa Thompson, all of them came together in terms of figuring out how to get all of the diff different aspects of the services that the coalition provides, not only throughout Denver and throughout Metro Denver, but throughout the state, but how to maximize the availability to 
to remove the barriers and to make sure that these services were as integrated as possible to make this project happen. So thank you all for your work as well. And then finally, um, I usually end up with, you know, with that pitch for the next project. I already did that. <laughs> uh, but the respite, uh, the recuperative care and legacy, Renaissance legacy lofts, um, we just uh, finally uh, came up with a name last week for that. Uh, that will be our next uh, uh, focus in terms of bringing that online. But as we leave, I just want, and uh, as we celebrate the opening here, we just have to remember that even after this building is filled uh, by the end of next month, that there's still over a thousand people that are going to be calling the streets of Denver their home tonight. Uh, and many more throughout the metro Denver area who are in shelter, uh, who are living in cars. I met with one of our family outreach workers this morning who um, actually passed her on the street. I said hello, and she wasn't her usual vibrant self. And she was in one direction, I was at the other. And half hour later, I went to visit her office and saying, what's the matter? Is there something wrong? And she said, well, she had just had an experience of having a family, a mother with a, a two-year-old and an infant who were sleeping in their cars. And the only resource that they could offer them was to get them on a waiting list for housing that might be available in a month or two months or more, and to provide them car seats for their car so they could go back and live in the car. And that was not the first time that that had happened. And the, the ongoing toll of having to, the heart-wrenching toll of, of having to say no over and over again because the resources aren't there is devastating and it does take a toll on our staff. Uh, and so, again, I leave you with that, just not uh, to, to leave this celebration on a downer note, but to recognize uh, the work that we have ahead of us. Uh, we're not done yet. I've been doing this for 35 years. I thought I would be retired by now. But we, you know, we can't let it go. Uh, there's too much work to be done. Uh, and so I, I really applaud you all for supporting these efforts. I urge you to continue to support these efforts so that those thousand plus people on the streets, that family and many other families living in their cars tonight, others who are sleeping on the floors or couches of their uh, families or friends because they can't afford a place to live in Denver, uh, that we'll be able to really turn the corner, bring those housing units online quickly, and provide a future not only for those individuals, but make our community better uh, by doing so. So thanks again for your work, uh, your support. Uh, we appreciate it. We have some food. If you haven't had a chance to visit upstairs and tour around, uh, we'll have some folks who'll be willing to share uh, to share that experience with you. So thank you.